Well, hello everybody, welcome back to another Minecraft plugin development tutorial video. Today, I am going to be having a look at StarScript, which is an amazing library helping you replace different things in your chat. Just to give you a quick illustration, we can get any variable dynamically, it's going to return, say, TPS, but then you can also do operations such as round and then having this like that, this syntax, there we go, and now it rounded it. You can also have different maps, such as you can have a player.nick, I don't have any nick, player.name, kangarco, and you can even have examples such as a uh, very basic condition, and I actually have the same in my game, let me just show this to you, hey, this is Hope it's gonna work yeah this is good because the good is actually true and i'm gonna be showing you how to code using this library because it's actually faster than using string that format i think it's pretty cool so the first step is we need to get this library into our plugin and i'm going to leave a link to this github repository in the video description let me just scroll down here and they provide usage using Gradle. We are not using Gradle to build our plugin throughout this series, so I'm going to be adapting this for Maven, and the Maven means that we have a little pom.xml file. Now, if this sounds scary to you, you're like, what the hell is this? I don't know, what is this file? And you have way too many classes right here, way too much code. Don't worry, guys. If you've never coded before, I do have a full Java training uh, together with, you know, Minecraft plugin development training, which you can check out in the video description below. It's called Project Orion. However, I also have over 40 videos on coding Minecraft plugins. So if you need you know any rehearsal i recommend you check the first the second video in this series and also check the video called libraries and api if you just look for libraries if you type libraries in the search bar it should pop up and it's going to help you explain uh what is this file for and what are these repositories and dependencies in short this file helps us compress everything together regarding the source code and as well as add libraries when we are developing so, so that we can connect and use them great let me just go find the end of the dependency right here and since they don't provide the format that we need i can just duplicate something else and then i can just copy the implementation so i'm gonna copy this first thing right here it looks kind of strange because they're not using any dots right here just something to be aware of and then i'll copy the artifact id right here and then the version appears to be 0.2.2 let me just check this into tags yeah that appears to be the most recent one there we go and you're gonna want to have the scope set to compile uh, so that when you export this plugin the library will ship with it now it's very important that you will relocate this library so that if two plugins are using it uh, then it doesn't java has to load them from separate paths however if you don't if because if you don't do this you will end up with a plugin conflict with an import or dependency hell as it's being called in lingo now Again, I do recommend you check the video that I did about libraries, uh, because there, are, there I explain how to manage these, where I am, how to manage these relocations, and I'm not gonna waste my time in this video, so this video will just be very plain and simple. We're going to be getting this inside our build system, and then compiling it and exporting it. Now, if you are advanced, you may wonder, why can't I, why do I have to compile it? Why can't I just put it in the libraries in my plugin YML? That's a great question. Unfortunately, this feature is only supported when the repository is located on the Maven Central. So if I type in Maven Central to Google, it has to be from mvnrepository.com. And if we try to look for the group ID Meteor, Meteor Development, you see that it's not there. They are using a custom repository right here. So this one will not work. And that's why we have to compile it together with our plugin. Now, the second thing is we, of course, need to add the dependency. I'm just going to type it manually, Meteor Development. Then ID does not really matter. What matters is, of course, the URL right here. Let me just add it. And people always forget to press the goddamn Maven import button, which you can see right here. So make sure to press it and wait for it until it loads all the changes it needs. And if you are not seeing this button, don't cry, don't dislike this video, just right click on the pom.xml, just like this, go to Maven and hit reload project, it's gonna do the same thing. 
All right, all things considered, we're now done. Now, let me just pop some other class right here. We already built a lot. Let me tell you, the last 40 videos were very exhausting to make, but also very re re rewarding. And one thing that I'm going to make is open up the chat listener. Now, we already have built a chat listener. Again, if you have no idea what the hell is a listener, check out the video called Game Events in this free Minecraft plugin tutorial series. And basically here, when we were dealing with ChatGPT, another video of mine, I just commented this in, uh, commented this out, because there is another listener, listener called AI Listener, which listens to the same event, and there was a conflict. So today I'm going to fix the conflict by simply specifying this to operate on the lowest priority. Again, guys, check my video about game events to learn more how priorities work. Uh, basically, this one is gonna come first. It's going to check if the AI chat GPT is operating, and if not, then this is going to come second. If you don't specify a priority, it'll be on normal, and here is the lowest one, so that one comes first, then comes low, and then finally, this is going to be taking place. Now, I'm going to comment this because we don't really need this. I'm just interested in the event itself. And then I'm gonna go to usage, Java. And you know what, You know what, guys? I can just blatantly steal whatever is on GitHub because that's what I like to do. You know, I'm not a really good coder. You know, haters like to expose me. So I might as well expose myself. And I just copied everything from Git. Yeah, that's how I roll. That's how I made all of my plugins. However, I'm going to be very advanced here and I'm going to actually give you a higher coding standard. So this start script doesn't have a particularly great name. I'm just going to rename it to star script. And here, what we can actually do, unprecedented, I can copy this because this one has nothing uh, to do with that event. It's very generic. And I can just have a chat listener as a constructor and there we go we can just externalize this field there we go and then the standard lib is just going to add a couple of functions which you can all learn about in the starscript wikipedia and i think that i demonstrated the round function at the very beginning great so now we have these lines right the first one is the result is going to basically parse the message this one for the demo it can just be event get message meaning you know what i typed in the game and then there is the error which we have to import now very careful i guess you have to import this manually from meteor development and if you double click it if you are using eclipse it'll literally import this with the uh, package name like this. However, I guess IntelliJ can figure this out. Just make sure to import it because by default, this will be imported from Java Lang package, which can cause some issues. Great. So if there's any problem, so I can tell the player what really happened, what is the issue, but of course for production, I don't recommend uh, you do this. And of course you need to also convert this error to a string. So now we have some basic handling. Yep. Yeah, and then there is a problem. We also can just cancel the message. I guess this is just a demo for this video. I'm not gonna bother that much. Next up, let's import the script just like that. And then we also have to import the compiler because again, by default, it comes, it imports from Java Lang package. So double click this. If you're using Eclipse, again, double click, but I think Eclipse is, gonna, is going to append the full qualified package name and then compile the result right here. And then come the features. So basically these are the variables, right? And you know, we have a lot of great examples here, uh, here, for example. So you can parse numbers, you can parse, um, sorry, you can parse booleans, numbers, you can parse hash maps. And I'll, I guess that I'll just show you a couple of examples that I made uh, behind the scenes. That's right. So first of all, I just want to set the name to not mind gamer. I guess I forgot about it. Player dot get name. And so if you type in, you know, if I go to the game and I type in a name like this, it will simply translate to the player. If I type in good, it will simply translate to true. However, any Boolean can be used dynamically, as you can see right here. Today is good. And then there is a ternary operator, which, you know, if you are Java guru, you understand that. And that will simply return good if the good is true. However, if it's false, it will simply return bad. Great. And we can also return numbers to so TPS. And this is going to return the first tick per second from the, if you type in TPS, this is going to be the first value that you see there. So if I type in TPS, it's going to return, I don't know, 20 point something, right? And if you want to round it, uh, you can either just use math here to round it programmatically, or of course you can use the round function that is 
expo explained right here. I wanted to say exposed. And of course, if you, hit, if you go to Wikipedia, you can just read more about everything uh, that they have. So I'm not going to spend too much time explaining that. Great. Final thing that I want to show you is how to place multiple things into a hash map. So if I were to type in, say, player, this is the player map right here. Oh, and I completely forgot to actually put this into Starscript. So if you want to create a hash map, there's a thing called value map, which you have to use instead. And then you have to set the Starscript, uh, the main variable to the value map. So if I type in player dot, for example, name, it'll return player name. If I type in player dot display name, it's going to give me his display name. If it's if it's health player dot health, it should in theory, not in theory, in practice, it will return his health and likewise for the pink. I think that you get the point. The library is not so hard to use. I just wanted to give you a couple of basic examples. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. If you want to learn more about micro plugin development, check out Project Orion. The course is in the description of this video. I made it with love. Check it out. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time.